So Dr. Gelrud, moving on to chronic pancreatitis, very common condition. Why do people get chronic pancreatitis and what are the symptoms that people have? That's a very good question. I think that it's a chronic pancreatitis, it's a chronic inflammatory condition of the pancreas that as you know, frequently, it may lead to very debilitating pain, talking about symptoms. And uh, pain is the main reason why we tend to see these patients in our clinic. Approximately 50% of patients will have a lot of pain that it will be so severe that it may become very debilitating that we're going to need to treat you know, with different pain medications and so that we're going to talk later on during this interview. But why do people develop chronic pancreatitis? It's similar to the answer of acute pancreatitis. There's a genetic predisposition that we think the patient may have in order to have a pancreas that it's predisposed to develop the disease. And then there have to be other factors that may help trigger the disease. And this is something that we see in heavy alcohol users. We can see that also in patients that are smoking quite a bit every single day for multiple years. Or you can see it in different metabolic conditions also that may lead to chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis also may be the sequelae of a very, very bad episode of acute pancreatitis where the gland basically was injured so bad that both the endocrine and the exocrine part of the gland may start to malfunction. You know, something that it's important to stress also, it's the genetic influence of this chronic condition of the pancreas. I think that many of us believe that there has to be some type of predisposition in the gland to develop chronic pancreatitis. That's a great point, and I think that's something that's come about more recently. I think in the mm -hmm. past, people had been accused of heavy alcohol drinking whenever they had chronic pancreatitis, and I think more and more as we gain more insights into the physiology and genetics, we're finding out that many, if not almost all of these patients have an underlying condition that, again, as you said, predisposes them uh, to chronic pancreatitis. Besides the pain symptoms that people get, what are other symptoms that the patients can get with chronic pancreatitis? That's a very good question also because frequently we see patients that are coming with nonspecific abdominal symptoms like bloatiness, some abdominal pain that may not be too severe, and then they also tell you that they have some degree of diarrhea. Not necessarily they're going to see fat in the stool, but this may be the early symptoms that the exocrine pancreas, meaning the part of the pancreas that makes the enzymes, it's starting to malfunction, and the patient may be starting to malabsorb food, particularly fat and proteins. So these are questions that we're always going to be asking our patients when we see them in clinic. That's, that's a great point, and as you know, patients with chronic pancreatitis and have also with their excrement insufficiency an inability to absorb their food well, and that can lead to vitamin deficiencies, which can lead to problems uh, with weight gain, weight loss, osteoporosis, et cetera. So it's really important to recognize that they're in fact having those vitamin deficiencies. It's important also to mention that a small subset of patients are gonna have what it's called idiopathic chronic pancreatitis. And idiopathic chronic pancreatitis basically means we don't know why you have the disease. So it's important to be able to tell the patient, you know what, sometimes we know what's going on and we can try to fix it to prevent disease progression or the disease from getting worse, but in occasions we just don't know why you got the condition even though we know you have it. And that's a very good point. I think it's very frustrating for patients when we can't give them an answer as to why, but it's important to recognize again that there is a subset of patients who we don't know why, and they do in fact have this condition, not related to alcohol, not related to anything else that we can determine, but it's certainly a very real process and a very real disease for those patients.